What's going on, Laker fans? D-Mac here. We're back with another episode of the Lakers 24-8 Roundtable. And as always, I'm joined by a panel of esteemed yes, Lakers yes, experts. Hey. Starting with Mr. Noah Cameras. You can read his work on alllakers.com. Thanks for rocking with us, Noah. Very excited for another important show as we wind down this season. And then always, he brings the noise. Noise yes, by yes, Noel. Yes, Noel Sanchez repping his Lakers purple and yes, gold today. Sir. All right, let's dive right into it, gentlemen. So Austin Reeves, he continues yeah. to perform for the Lakers. Yep. He has been the guy that's just stepped into that starting lineup, which I said on the last show. I think uh, she should have started over Malik Beasley. Yeah, and he continued to impress. 25 points, 4 boards, 11 dimes on 60% shooting. If you look at his numbers, last 5 to 10 games, he is performing like a bona fide starter. Yeah. And the talk right now is that there is mutual interest in getting a new deal done yeah. between him and the Lakers this offseason. And my first question to you, Noah, is do you think that he is absolutely essential to the Lakers' future? Is he a must-sign for L.A.? Yeah, no, that is as must sign as a player can get. Austin Reeves, what he's doing for this team, I mean, he's kind of been one of the maybe the most consistent player on this team all season long. The more his minutes go up, the better he plays. You see him get into the starting lineup. What does he do? Gets 25 points, a career high 11 dimes, and he totally just leads this offense. And the thought of not having him on this team, I think without him right now, this team is probably 10 games out yeah. of the I'm 10 games out of the playoffs at this point because what, what he does, he is absolutely a must sign. And especially they're talking about four years, 50 million as the value. We were talking about that a few shows ago, and that was kind of our our, uh, prediction on that. So we definitely deserve our victory lap on that. But four years, $50 million for a consistent start, 12 and a half a year. I mean, think about it. Malik Beasley has a $16 million player option. He's getting 16 million this year. I'll take Austin Reeves over Beasley any day. So for him to get 4 million less than that over four years, this is a guy who must be a part of this team for the foreseeable future. He has too much talent. He continues to get better and exponentially better. Yep. And th- there's no way they can let him go. I mean, there's just no way you lose Austin Reeves this offseason. Yeah, and as you said, a four-year, $50 million deal. The Lakers can offer him up to $50.8 million by using his early birds, yep. right? They have the Gilbert Arenas roles. And to me, it's a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, no remember brainer. the talk a few years ago? It was between Alex Caruso yeah, and THT. Yep. He has the potential to be better than THT and Alex yeah, Caruso. I, I mean, combined. Honestly, literally. And I think what's great about him, too, is he's doing exactly what the Lakers need, because he's a guy that could come off the bench and be a spark plug, but they need his scoring. Yep. I mean, the free throw yeah. shooting, his it's ability insane. to get to the line, yeah. he's been absolutely impressive. And when he gets, and his ability to not only get to the line, but also make the end one, like yeah. every time. He has such a good touch, where when he kind of creates contact, he just knows how to get his body like centered to the hoop and just find a buck and he's yeah. getting and one after and one big shot after big shot I mean, he's literally one of this team's better scorers like i even sent it a tweet i'm like this is like this is the lakers best one-on-one scorer yeah. that was like a few weeks ago and he's, a only, banger. he's only banger proved right it there. now i mean like yeah. it, it I, I genuinely think when the lakers need a bucket there's no one else on this team i trust more right now than austin reeves but i'm gonna stop talking because i keep going so i'm gonna no, let, I mean, let, let's, let's, let's talk hear from noel yeah. what are your thoughts yeah. on his dominance of late and what have you seen in his game i'm really not too surprised from seeing this dominance from him because I've seen it since day one. He hasn't been scared and just the more freedom they give him, I feel like he takes advantage of it and he just rises to the occasion. Mm-hmm. A lot of people can't hang can't hang playing in LA and True. in the bright lights. We've seen that numerous times, but looking at the contract and looking what he can get, I see three and D players getting much more than this. Even someone like Duncan Robinson on the Heat <laughs> yeah, got, got that humongous oh, contract God. years ago just for being like a, a good shooting. shooter. Yeah, same with Davies Bertans. Yeah, exactly. Mm. These guys are getting these big contracts just for being able to shoot and they don't really provide anything else. You look at someone like Austin Reeves, his offensive game is really coming in and there's still potential for a lot to get in there. I look, they have Phil Handy, who he's going to be working with over the off season. And we've already seen as of late, his shot creation and finishing while he gets fouled is like none other like yep. he was talking in interviews saying that he learned from James Harden and Trey Young that's an amazing yeah. sign like no one really expect a role player to be studying guys that are superstars mm-hmm. looking at that film but I look at Austin Reeves and I truly think that he wants to get to that level and I think he's a major part of the Lakers future and he's a top three priority right now up there with DeAndre Russell and Jared Vanderbilt for me hey, so you say you want him to get to that level I am curious yeah. like what do you guys think Austin Reeves ceiling it like do you think it's all-star level do you think it's kind of just like a solid role player like what do you think Doug well I mean if you look at Manu's numbers the two all-star teams he made yeah. Yeah. look at those numbers and they don't jump off the page yeah. average 16 4 and 4 at 33 and then 17 5 and 4 later and those numbers yeah, those don't scream crazy. all-star yeah, yeah. so if he's on a Laker team that's a top three season 
especially in the West. And people around the league, they know his role. You talk about the Lakers fans and how popular he is and how big yeah. of a buzz he creates. I think he absolutely could make an all-star team. I don't see him being a third-team All-NBA or a second-team yeah. All-NBA. But I think the floor for him, though, is just a really good rotational guy that can come in and get bucket, yeah. buckets. I mean, a lot of people want to compare him to some other role players. But I think really a Lou Williams, a Jamal Crawford, yeah. but yeah. on a lesser scoring level. Of course, I threw out the name Manu Ginobili. I see a lot of the internet running with that yeah. last few <laughs> Doug days. Doug said it first. And Doug yeah. said it. He called him a right-handed Manu right, Ginobili. Right-handed Manu Ginobili. And now Look. I see it on Twitter. So Doug said it first. Hey, man. Hey, fans of the show. I appreciate yeah, that. we do. And to me, it's just his body control. It's his ability yeah. to create shots. And also, too, Manu Ginobili was fearless. And Reeves has that same yeah, fearlessness to him. So I think his ceiling is a one- or two-time All-Star. But I think the balance is right in the middle there. A guy that can score 17 to 19 points per game, gets you five, six assists, yeah. a few boards, some steals, and hit like 20 out of 20 from the free throw yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. what do you think what is the ceiling, Noel? I mean, what I love, like you guys are saying, is that just that ability to draw fouls and, mm -hmm. you know, attack the basket when your shot isn't falling. I think that's kind of a lost start these days. Yep. A lot of people fall in love with that three-point shot. Even some of our own Lakers, they don't want to get down low. They don't want to get into the big guys in the paint. But Reese plays with this dog in him that I just love seeing. And, I mean, looking at his ceiling, like, when we're looking at the All-Star game, like we said, this Laker fan base is just insane. And even if he's just putting up like, let's say 16, 17 points and the Lakers are the third, second seed down the line, I think he's a lock for the All-Star game, <laughs> even just the, you know, rotational spot on that team because, you know, our market out here is crazy. Yeah. And the fans are already voting him in. Yeah, exactly. He's, he's already like top 10 in fan voting. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah that's just, a great point. I mean, he's going to start. So both were like, yeah, that. he's going to start gaining respect from other NBA players. And I was telling you guys this before, too, that I feel like we're really going to see what he's made of probably these coming games because teams are going to start game planning against him. Yeah, that's Will LeBron still be out for mm -hmm. however long? We don't know yet. And with the playoff race is pretty hot right now, teams are trying to win as many games as possible. And they're going to start looking at Reeves as like kind of that guy. Whereas before, they weren't really game planning against oh him. Oh, God, no. Yeah. yeah he he's was, averaging like 10 points a game. Exactly. So like you don't game plan yeah. for something like that. He just, he's catching, getting the ball off the catch and just creating and kind of going with the flow right now. Yeah. So, no, in, no, 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 go for it. Go for yeah, it. Yeah. No, something I think with Reeves as far as ceiling goes, I, I feel like, I mean, championship teams need great role players. Yeah. Like they need them. I mean, like you look at other Laker teams in the past, like, Kobe and Powell aren't doing that alone without the yeah. role players around them. And like these championship teams need that. And I think Austin Reeves is for sure his quote unquote ceiling could be the number three guy on a championship team. I don't think he'd be like, a, he's not gonna be a number one guy on a yeah. championship team, but like a number three, like the best glue role player on a championship team. And then like you said, if that team ends up being a really high seed, he could easily sneak into some all-star games, but like, I don't think he worries about that kind of stuff. I think all he cares about is just continuing to improve his game. And his game is the kind of game that even if he's having an off day, he'll still do the little things yeah. for you, which is why he's such a valuable player. Because yeah, if his shot's not falling, first of all, he's going to get to the basket, he's going to draw fouls, but also he's going to give it to you on defense. Exactly. So even if he's not, has a, has he, if he doesn't have a shot one day, he'll still find a yeah. way to one score and then also do the other thing. So that's why I feel like he's really like a number three best, the third best player on championship yeah. team. I don't, know, I don't know about you guys, but I don't really see him like, like being a yeah. liability whenever he's on the court. Like, no, it's like the opposite. I see it when, I know we love Jerry Vanderbilt around here, mm. but sometimes when he catches the ball in three, yeah, like I mean, he's hesitant to shoot and that's his weakness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, like a lot of other players, they kind of hurt us at times, but I feel like Reeves is always picking up his slack in one way or yeah, another. Exactly. But what do you think, though? Yeah, and one no. question I want to pose to you guys was, look, we saw another player a few years ago, Lynn Sanity. Is this a Reeves Sanity, <laughs> yeah. or do you think this is sustainable? Is yeah, this who he is? Well, first of all, the thing with, I mean, Lynn came out of nowhere yeah. when he came, like, it was like a, I don't know, it was like a Sleeping month. Sleeping on couches. I mean, he was literally sleeping <laughs> on couches, comes out of nowhere. Reeves is different. Reeves was he was good last year. He's yeah. a solid role player on this team, and all he's done is just continue to improve his game. It's not like he had one really strong week and then it kind of goes back to, I mean, he's just consistently gotten better. And I'd say exponentially yeah. better at this point in the year where there's no way you look at this guy and say, oh, he's done improving. Yeah. I mean, there's no way you say, oh, he's done being dominant. And also Lynn was, I mean, Jeremy Lynn was just, it was all offense. It was like a, yeah. an insane scoring stretch. But again, if Austin Reeves doesn't have his shot one day, he can give you exactly. so much on the defense. Yeah. And then he's going to now all of a sudden get 11 yeah. assists in the game. Like he just does so much that this is not a case of, him having a, a high yeah. or whatever. And then like, if yeah, he stops yeah. getting the whistle, it's over. No, no, no. I mean, yeah. Austin is going to find a way to contribute. I mean, it's not going to get 25 points yeah. a game, but he's going to go out. He's going to find his double digits and he's going to do a little, a lot of little. No, yeah. And you guys talk about Linsanity, but I think about even Cam Thomas from this season. Yeah, that like, was he, its own He insanity. had a crazy stretch of like 40 point games and everybody's loving him and he's mm. trying to trademark his, his saying. And, yeah, you know, he's at the funny. top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's trying to, he's at the top of the world. And then I look at him now, he's getting DMPs. Yep. And when people are wondering why, it's because they weren't winning those games that he was going crazy scoring in, whereas Reeves is actually actually 
kind of helping the Lakers stay afloat. Yeah, he's the and reason they're winning. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't. I don't think this is just like a one of those you know stretches that's gonna people are gonna look back and be like, damn, what happened to Austin yeah. Reeves? Like, <laughs> I think there's just a glimpse of what's coming in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think also why he's sustainable is the versatility. He can pass. He can shoot. Yeah. He can play defense. So he can fall back on one of those attributes. And yeah, Austin is him. Austin him Reeves. Austin. Yeah. And we're gonna talk about his partner in crime really of late. Did you guys see them calling D'Lo yeah, and Austin Reeves Vanilla Ice? I love it. Oh, I love that. I didn't hear that one. That was pretty cold. nice. I like that. That was such a good nickname. And there are some. There is some talk right now that there is mutual interest. You Jovan Boo of The Athletic, he said, from what I've been told, the Lakers have very strong interest in re-signing him. Yes, I believe sir. it's mutual on both sides. It's just going to come down to what type of deal that looks like. And really, I think, my personal opinion, sign that $117 million deal. He did make an all-star team. It's not like he's improved tremendously. I think what he's worth is that same deal. Maybe yeah. four years, $120 yeah. million. Dollars. But no, what say you? What kind of contract do you anticipate the Lakers signing D'Angelo Russell to? Yeah, I mean, if the they're going to give him a four-year deal it's not going to be less than 100 million i mean he's just he's not going to take like a 20 million dollar yeah. a year deal i mean he has the all-star under his belt yep. i mean I, I do think he's a much better player i mean he's obviously a much better player now than he was when he started with the lakers yeah. but i also just think he really fits perfectly as the point guard of this team um and a big thing for me is i just think the lakers need to kind of stick to a team at one point i mean they've exactly, had three yeah, different exactly. teams since 2020 when they yeah. won it all and at some point you got to just say we have the pieces. Let's do some continuity. Yeah. So does that mean picking up a $16 million Malik Beasley option? Maybe it does. You obviously have uh, Jared Vanderbilt coming back at $4 million because he has the option already um, or already has a contract. And then Austin Reeves bringing him back, D'Angelo Russell. Now you have a core. Now you finally have a core that has a full offseason. I mean, you already said what uh, D'Angelo Russell said, like, wait till we get a training camp. <laughs> yeah. Well, we don't need a training camp. But, I mean, think about it. Like, let, let this team have a full offseason yeah. together. We don't have to be sitting on our phones saying, who are the Lakers going to sign this year to replace all the guys they lost? I mean, this is the time for them to have some continuity. And if that means paying D'Lo for 120, then so be it. Because it's time to give some stability next yeah. to LeBron and AD for, I mean, however many few years LeBron has left. Yeah. yeah I mean, I push back a little bit on the excitement for a D'Angelo Russell yeah, extension. Yeah. Mainly it's because, look, I mean, he kind of is what he is. He regresses. He definitely is streaky yeah. at times. I do think that they should sign him no matter what, just to retain that asset. But remember, Dan, I'm not comparing him to Dennis Schroeder because he's a significantly mm -hmm. better point guard player than Dennis Schroeder. But remember when Laker fans were freaking out a little bit when the Lakers Four, didn't sign him to yeah. four years, 84 million. And then you look at what they got him for now and the deal he ultimately wouldn't sign. I mean, sometimes the best signings are the ones you don't make. And yeah. yes, he has kind of fell into their lap via the trade and the Lakers. They wanted to get rid of Russell Westbrook, but they also wanted to get someone in return that could help them. But I mean, what have you seen so far from D'Angelo Russell that kind of makes you think the Lakers should sign him? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think us, all of us, just like every other Laker fan, we were pretty caught up in the initial excitement, just having that natural point guard again that yeah. could actually shoot, handle the ball. But I'm still very on board with the fact that we should resign him. That $120 million deal is looking very, very attractive for him. And, you know, I think, like you said, he is going to be who he is at this point. He's not going to, I don't think he's going to take another jump like he did when he went to the Brooklyn Nets. Like, you know, he has his skills. I think just any lefty point guard is always very smooth. And mm -hmm. him especially, he creates, he runs the pick and roll beautifully with Anthony Davis. And most of all, I see him holding his teammates accountable. Yeah. And, you know, that's what the Lakers are going to need is, LeBron doesn't want to be 40 years old still yelling out. He wants to take some games off, you know, sit on the bench, tap up D'Lo. They already got that handshake going. So, you know, I'm pretty excited for what D'Lo is going to bring us in the future. And I think that training camp is going to do wonders. But the sky's still the limit. Just yeah, like sky's you said. The limit. Yeah. The sky's the limit. Yeah, and then on top of that, too, I just think guards with D'Lo's skill set, they can be found at moderate money. And yeah. if you look at him defensively, he doesn't play very much defense. I mean, he he's a guy that's streaky from three. I mean, could the Lakers use that money to address some other needs, like a center, like some more wing depth, yeah. some more shooting? I mean, that's another thing that I would consider, especially when you consider that crunch time lineup. I'm still waiting to see D'Angelo Russell and LeBron James on the same court at the yeah. same time, because for D'Angelo to cook he needs the rock in his hands if you look at his per numbers he's 17th in the league as a point guard at 16.71 so it's not like he's even a top 10 point guard yeah. so like i said i bring my facts to the fight i mean the oh, yeah. numbers will tell you that he's yeah. not in the De De'Aaron fox or the trey young or the jalen brunson yeah. category we look at what they do yeah, brunson on both. Got, what 4104 he got 4104 so yeah, that's not that's not 4120 like yeah. let's be honest if d'angelo russell wasn't mr ice in his veins if he wasn't yelling at the crowd and really trying to 
create that that uh, that bond that he has with, yeah. with him. Because look, let's be honest, he does have great charisma. If he was just a boring guy, didn't have very much going for him, I don't think that you would be saying, oh, he's a lock to get 120 million dollars. Yeah. But now we're going to talk about another guy that if they don't want to go the D'Angelo Russell route is Kyrie <laughs> Irving. Of course, wow, another Laker podcast talking about Kyrie. Yeah. <laughs> but hey, this is a different angle on it because yeah. there was some talk the other day that the Lakers aren't interested in Kyrie Irving and then you saw Mark Stein on his sub stack that he said that that the Lakers and Suns are the two teams mm -hmm. within agent circles that are most commonly linked to Kyrie so me mm -hmm. to me this looks like gamesmanship this looks yeah. like the Lakers saying hey we don't want to give Kyrie Irving any leverage and we'll talk about how they could get Kyrie and what they would have to do but just what are your initial thoughts on that should the Lakers still pursue Kyrie Irving that's tough. I, yes, they should pursue it in the fact that they, they should not not be open minded to it because if Kyrie does want to come, I mean, I, I do still think Kyrie, LeBron and AD wins a title. Um, do they need to pursue it as aggressively now and potentially like get out they try to outbid other teams? No, because I do think they have a nice core with D'Angelo Russell. And like I said, maybe not mixing things up again and especially bringing in someone Kyrie who brings his own drama with him. Yeah. Like it's definitely a little risky. Um, but I mean, if, if Kyrie makes it clear that he wants to come to the Lakers and like he's the team they want to sign with, they'd, they'd be foolish to not, you know, at least acknowledge that and yeah, try to make something happen. Take the I mean, at you least. have to at least yeah. like, see what happens because Kyrie Irving is still, I personally think, probably a top, I honestly think he's probably a top two, three scoring point guard yeah. in the league right now. I mean, maybe after Steph and maybe Dame. I mean, but Kyrie's right there. So you have to at least, you know, give it a shot. But I'm still leaning towards the running it back with what they have. Yeah. Um, but I mean, it's Kyrie Irving. I mean, this guy's insane. <laughs> yeah, it's like those tweets that the kids will say underneath would just say, is Kyrie better? Like, <laughs> Kyrie's significantly yeah. better oh, than D'Angelo Russell. Yeah. Really, the only thing that D'Angelo Russell is better at is the fact that he knows that the earth is round. But other than that, <laughs> Kyrie is a superior player. But, Noel, yeah. what are your thoughts on Kyrie and should the Lakers pursue him? It's very, very tempting. Like, you guys are saying when you take a look at LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Kyrie Irving in, in those jersey edits like that, it looks beautiful. I was all for it at the trade deadline, but now seeing this team that we've been able to put together, I'm just thinking historically. I look at the Lakers starting with Kobe and Shaq when they didn't win a title and then they acquired Carl Malone and Gary Payton at a pretty old age. That was the end. Kobe and Shaq were done. Then Kobe and Pau Gasol teamed up. Everything was all good. They won two titles with guys like Andrew Bynum, Derek Fisher, a lot of depth around them. Then they went for Steve Nash and Dwight Howard everything went downhill there. And then you go to this new era where we won in 2020, won a championship. We had a lot of big guys. We had a lot of shooters, a lot of wings. Then one postseason where we get injuries and we don't necessarily have the season we like. We tried all of that for Russell Westbrook. So I'm just looking historically when the Lakers go for a third star, something always happens. And historically, when they have two stars and they have a lot of depth around them, a lot of shooters, a lot of defense, good things happen. We win titles. So as tempting as it is to bring in Kyrie, I think we should run it back with our current squad. See, I know I'm in the minority of Laker fans, but I still feel like the Lakers should go all in yeah, yeah. on pursuing Kyrie Irving. Now, sometimes it's better to have four quarters than a dollar, but Kyrie Irving is a guy that's still in his prime. You mentioned yeah. the Lakers having two stars and being surrounded by depth. I think in a lot of cases, that's true. We saw that work in 2020, but can you count on this version of LeBron James from a health standpoint? True, if it was true. prime LeBron and prime AD, you can guarantee me 60 to 80 yeah. games per year plus a full playoff run. Now, I would say, like yeah. five rings already. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they have five rings and you could absolutely get the depth. Now, if you look at Kyrie, he's going to demand the full $46.9 million max this summer. The Lakers can't clear out enough cap to sign him outright. So the best they could do is send out 80% of their salary and do a sign-in trade with Dallas. So 80% of $46.9 million is 37.52. Crunch some numbers. The sleepless in Seattle last night, as you know. <laughs> and you would have to basically renounce Mo Bamba's $10 million, Beasley's $16 million. And what you could do is you could extend D'Angelo Russell before this season, and you could offer him two years $67.5 million dollars and try to work a sign in trade deal of course on the move again. Deal on the move again the Lakers would be hard capped and yeah it would be tough but the way I look at it is this look this team their successors failure is all about a championship yeah. it's about winning the 18th championship if it, if a successful season meant a Western Conference finals or a finals appearance I'd say yeah let's go for sustainability let's go for depth but I would take three years of toxic Kyrie for one more <laughs> championship with LeBron and AD it's yeah. like going 
with that toxic 10 girl. You know she's crazy and she's going to set all your stuff on fire outside of the front house versus going with the girl next door, the high school sweetheart, the more comfortable choice. Look, I will take the toxic model and all the, the circus that goes with it with Kyrie if it means one more championship. That is what's important right now. What an analogy. But I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, are you with me? Am I starting to talk you into it? No, I, 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 Damn. I mean, I, I do like Bad the analogy. Salesman. You kind of had, kind of had me on the. Well, here, no, okay, no, here's my the next door, I mean, next door neighbor. I mean, I, I'm totally. I mean, I'm in on the idea of having Kyrie. I mean, Kyrie has been one of my favorite players as far as you know on the court, basketball yeah. stuff. I mean, he's just such a fun player to watch. Great score, but what does a team look like after you're renouncing everybody, get rid of everyone? You have Kyrie, LeBron, and AD, and then like. What are you planning to have around them? You're not going to have much to do. A bunch of G leaguers. I mean, it's going to be a bunch the of like South Bay Lakers. I mean, B- what, bunch you know, of butter know. knives surrounded by some. I mean, like knives. you're going back to what was that last year when they brought everyone back on veteran minimum, like whatever. I mean, I just I'm worried about the depth. Call up Andre Ingram. Yeah, I mean, one, more time, I mean, one more time. One more time. I'm worried about Dwight, the depth. He's in Taiwan playing with. Uh, <laughs> All, right. All right, I'm worried about the depth <laughs> around that team um, because. You know Anthony Davis is not going to play a full season. It's now very clear LeBron's not going to be playing full seasons. Yeah. And who knows with Kyrie. So now you're trusting three stars who probably aren't going to play more than 60 games each, probably less for some of them. And then around them, you have very little talent. And I just, I mean, if if AD goes down in the playoffs, I don't trust LeBron and Kyrie to win yeah. a, tr- a championship with a bunch of, I don't want to say scrub, but like a bunch of non Good role players. Plumbers. <laughs> sure, you can call them plumbers. <laughs> yeah. So, no. what are your thoughts on something like that? I mean, well, that depth. What I want to ask you guys about, though, and I wore out this up pretty soon is look, I think that there's a lot of Laker fans that have been hurt and a little, they have a little PTSD after what happened with Russell Westbrook. And they yeah. say, oh, the three star model doesn't work. You can't compare this version of yeah, Russell Westbrook not. versus for this version of Kyrie yeah, Irving. That's sure, like sure. comparing Steve Nash when he was a Laker on his last legs yeah. compared to. Chris Paul when yeah, he was with the no, Thunder, yeah, yeah. someone like I that. I mean, Kyrie has a yeah. lot in his oh, for tank. Sure. For sure. And look, like to me, what it's all about the Lakers is winning another championship. And you look what the Rams did. You win a championship and you forget about it and you rebuild it, you blow it up and you yeah. try to win the next one. Some organizations, it makes complete sense for sustainability. Yeah. I think the Warriors, they're still relatively new in the grand scheme of things as far as being a marquee team. You want to win every year. You have a new arena. Yeah. You have Steph Curry, Draymond Green, Clay Thompson, a lot of those young pieces. The Los Angeles Dodgers, the baseball team, they want to have a sustainable <laughs> model, right? And they want to compete every year. If the Lakers won a title this year or next year, and you could say, oh, they signed LeBron James and won two titles, then you would give them five or six yeah. years of equity to win the next one. Because the Lakers, they could puff out their chest, cross their <laughs> arms and say, we have 18 championships now, and this model works. It's two titles, at least one title every decade. Yeah. Grand scheme of things, that's what's important. So yeah. I'm still all in on going for Kyrie because I truly, truly believe his shot making ability and also so too, Russell Westbrook did not fit with LeBron no, James, yeah. right? And LeBron and Kyrie, they're, they're we've seen their duo up close. It's a winning see. formula. No, I like I've I would love Kyrie. Don't get me wrong, but come I, on the dark side. <laughs> on, I want to. Trust me. You know I want side. to. You know I want to. You know Kyrie. That's like one of the most skilled point guards ever, if not the most skilled. I'm, I love his handles, love his finishing, his clutch, clutch gene. Like it's unmatched. But it's just the money and just the drama surrounding him that scares me. That's the only thing. Like. I, I want to go all in with you, Doug. I do, but <laughs> man, it's sometimes I, just, I don't know. I'm tired of all the moves. I just want a team that I can watch for like four, four or five seasons without making some crazy trade. You, you want to have a team where you can buy the jerseys and not be aware that you're going to lose that Exactly, yeah. Like- I hear them in trade rumors every yeah. other week. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, so we'll see how it plays out. But I do still think that he's more of an option than a lot of Laker fans realize. And also, too, if LeBron comes back and they struggle in the postseason, if D'Angelo Russell ends his team's postseason run on the bench like he did <laughs> last year with the yeah. Timberwolves, we know that things can change very quickly uh, in Laker land. One game. Another thing, I mean, too, on just one more fact, too, is, look, the Lakers, when they lose, they're still a headline. Most franchises, when they lose, they are irrelevant. Yeah. So the Lakers win, it's great. If they're, they're not winning, they're still making headlines. <laughs> The Lakers yeah. haven't been 500 all year. They have a chance against the Thunder to go 500. They have not been 500 all year, and yet they're in headlines ESPN more than still post them the most. anyone yeah. else. They've the literally most. had a losing record for the first 73 <laughs> games of the year, and they're still in headlines every single day. Hashtag Kyrie to LA. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Lakers 24-8 Roundtable. Thanks, as always, for joining me, Mr. Noah Cameras. He knows all things Lakers. And to go read his work at alllakers.com. And then Noise by Noel. Fire, right. Follow him for the fire content on 
Instagram. You can follow him at Noise by Noel, Mr. Noel Sanchez. And let us know down below, do you think the Lakers should still pursue Kyrie Irving, or would you rather see the Lakers stick with re-sign the guys they have now and go with D'Angelo Russell and some depth around LeBron and AD? Let us know down below. If you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe to the Lakers 24A YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And until next time, go Lakers.